Well, so that's had a bit of time to dry, and as you can see, it's looking a little bit bobbly and maybe a little bit of a crease here and there. We want this to conform nicely, so this is where we get our micro softener. And what we're going to do is just open this up first, All right? And we're going to very carefully just paint this on like so. We're going to do that to all the decals. You will notice I haven't put the um, number three just on here because when it comes to putting decals on top of decals, it's best to go through the process of the first decal fully um, conformed, dried, and then you can sort of start putting decals on top of decals then. So the last thing you wanna be doing with your decals is what tends to happen is when we use these decaling solutions, they seem to leave a bit of a residue behind, which can feel a little bit maybe sticky, even look a bit sort of stained. It's always a good idea to just come along and clean up your decals afterwards, just to make sure you're not gonna have any sort of contaminants getting in the way of whatever weathering or um, spraying we're gonna do afterwards to, to, to make sure that everything's gonna go down nicely. So simply just, you know, getting a moist cotton wool bud, we can take our decals and just give them a little bit of a rub around. I mean, make sure that your decals have fully dried, right? Because we, we don't want to be rubbing at this when they're sort of even slightly sort of still sort of moist or something because we're going to rub them away. But once they've dried, they should be able to take us just giving them that little bit of a rub down just to get rid of any sort of leftover residue of our deckling solutions which once we've done that what we want to do is get out um, some gloss and just give it say two light misty coats and that is just to completely seal these decals in which you've then got this sort of sandwich thing going on where you've got a gloss coat then you've got your decal and then you've got another gloss coat on top of that just sandwiching it in and it'll just stop them from coming off it'll make them look as though they're painted on and then we're ready to do a bit of weathering so now we've got uh, a gloss coat all over this what it's done is protected everything because the next stage we're going to do is probably something uh, not many of you have potentially used um, what i'm going to be using is enamel based um, paints in this case i'm using a panel line wash this is by ammo i'm using a nice deep brown as well that is um, a mig 1618 now using enamels and acrylics um, it gives you a good advantage a good advantage because we've used acrylics right it's it's like um, oil to water when it comes to enamels they just don't mix right uh, and that gives us a great advantage that what we do with our enamels on top of our acrylics um, won't um, sort of so it won't mix so it won't sort of dry into there uh, and whatnot so we can remove any mistakes which allows us to um, do this really sort of nice pin wash technique so giving it a good mix what we're going to do is just open this up and using a sort of a nice pointy paintbrush right we just dip into here and what we can do um, if we just find like a nice little bit, maybe just on his pauldron here, bring you in a little bit closer. If we just sort of like touch any sort of raised areas, right, any recessed areas, what's going to happen is, I mean, because it's nice and thin, this panel line wash, it will um, have that capillary reaction to just move in and around any sort of areas like this and we can just touch it but we don't have to sort of um, if we was using acrylics and we was doing this sort of pin wash technique we'd be worrying about um, making mistakes and if we made mistakes we'd have to sort of get the old colors back out and um, sort of redo it all right uh, and it just makes so much trouble but by using enamel washes we can so easily clean up any mistakes that we've made, which as you can see, you know, this isn't like massively neat, right? But 
it, I'll show you in the next stage, it just cleans up so easily. So if you just go around and any sort of recesses, raised areas where you can sort of put some sort of form of a, a shadow or uh, maybe dirt or groin building up, we can sort of um, do that all the way around. And so with that um, pin wash on there now, all that detail is being brought out and it's making our piece look a lot more interesting. But as I say, we've got loads of mistakes on there because we've been pin washing it and um, we don't need to be like mega, mega detail because this can be cleaned up so, so easily. Because as I say, we've got, it's like oil to water. It's not going to really stick to our um, acrylic um, paints or acrylic gloss that we put on so what we can do we can get out some enamel odorless thinners it's good to actually use the thinners that you get um, for that same manufacturer when using some ammo pan panoline wash so it's good to use their thinners I know some people they will go out and get something like white spirits or something like that from like a hardware store you do get a hell of a lot more for your money but it's um, this is the right intensity, the right strength um, for our enamel panel line wash. If you use something like White Spirits, it is potentially going to be stronger, and it is potentially, even though it's like oil to water, can sort of melt through to our acrylic paint. So it is good to stick with what the manufacturers um, suggest. So what we're going to do using our same paintbrush, we're getting our odorless enamel. Um, Finners, getting a kitchen paper towel. What we want to do is prepare our paintbrush. I'm just dipping into our thinners and I'm just now sort of getting our paintbrush and making sure it's sort of clean and um, it's got some um, thinners on there. Not sort of drenched in it, but it's just nice and damp. That's what's um, good for using the kitchen paper towel for, is just to sort of get your paintbrush nice and damp. So then we can say come into our um, miniature here and what we simply can do we can just almost sort of brush over recessed panel lines and as you can see that just cleans that up lovely um, and then what we can do is again dipping into our um, thinners cleaning off our brush making sure our brush is just nice and damp right when it comes to um, sort of like raised areas we can just brush along it nice and simple and as you can see it just cleans it up so so easily uh, and it's so much easier to do it around sort of like recessed areas you can almost as long as you know your enamel paint has dried you can just almost sort of brush across and it just cleans it up really really well All right now the neat you are applying your panel line wash the less you've sort of got to um, clean up, which is good. But as you can see, you know, it's really easy just to clean it up. You can even go off and get, say, a cotton wool bud, um, which I'll just get in there. And all you've got to do is you just dip it into your thinners, like so. And then what you do is you get your kitchen paper towel, just roll it across the kitchen paper towel, just to make this nice and damp like your uh, paintbrush and say in some sort of bigger areas maybe you can go off and just sort of quickly you know give it a quick once over right and we're just cleaning up sort of like the major sort of mistakes just here um, if you want to sort of quickly sort of maybe I tend to sort of give it a once over with a cotton wool bud just to get rid of the, the bigger bits of mess Right, and then I sort of go in with a nice little paintbrush and sort of make sure we sort of finish um, all the little bits up nice and tidy like. Right, so it may take you a little bit of time to do that, but it just, the whole point of this process is you can't make a mistake. You can't make a mistake because everything can be just cleaned up nice and easily. If you wipe away too much, get out your panel line wash, reapply, you know, let it dry, wipe it up um, with your odorless thinners. So it is a really good technique where you don't have to be like a pro or anything like that. You can just whack it on, clean it up. And, you know, as I say, because you just cannot make a mistake, 
you just you know keep wiping it up or, or reapplying until it's all nice and done so i'm going to go around and get this all nice and done and then you want to leave it to dry enamels normally take a little bit longer to dry than acrylics although this is very thin down um, enamel paints so um, you know maybe half an hour down the line you should be all right but I mean you know maybe leave it for a couple of hours if you're gonna put anything else on top